Hi, I'm Tristan. I'm 13 years old. I'm curious. I'm passionate. And I'm sure you are too. Join me on a quest to dig deep and find out new things. Welcome to Youth Voices. Good evening. Welcome to my program. This is your host, Tristan Pang on Planet FM 104.6. Youth Voices, good to have you company on a Saturday evening. In today's show, we will continue our chat with an inspirational and innovative teacher, Richu Siji. I'll also share with you some inspirational quotes and stories, so here we go. Let's be inspired. The Mouse Trap from AcademicLips.org A mouse looks through the crack in the wall to see the farmer and his wife opening a package. What food might this contain? The mouse wondered. He was devastated to discover it was a mouse trap. Retreating to the farmyard, the mouse proclaimed the warning. There's a mouse trap in the house. There's a mouse trap in the house. The chicken clucked and scratched, raised her head, and said, Mr. Mouse, I can tell that this is a grave concern to you, but there's no consequence to me. I cannot be bothered by it. The mouse turned to the pig and told him, There's a mouse trap in the house. There's a mouse trap in the house. The pig sympathized, but said, I'm so very sorry, Mr. Mouse, but there's nothing I can do about it but pray. Be assured you are in my prayers. The mouse turned to the cow and said, There's a mouse trap in the house. There's a mouse trap in the house. The cow said, Well, Mr. Mouse, I'm sorry for you, but it's no skin off my nose. So the mouse returned to the house, head down and dejected to face the farmer's mouse trap alone. That very night, a sound was heard throughout the house, like the sound of a mouse trap catching its prey. The farmer's r- wife rushed to see what was caught. In the darkness, she did not see it was a poisonous snake whose tail the trap had caught. The snake bit the farmer's wife. The farmer rushed her to the hospital and she returned home with a fever. Everyone knows you treat a fever with fresh chicken soup. So the farmer took his hatchet to the farmyard for the soup's main ingredient. But his wife's sickness continued. So friends and neighbors came to sit with her around the clock. To feed them, the farmer butchered the pig. The farmer's wife did not get well, she died. So many people came for her funeral, the farmer had the cow slaughtered to provide enough meat for all of them. The mouse looked upon it, all from his crack in the wall, with great sadness. So the next time you hear someone is facing a problem and think it doesn't concern you, remember, when one of us is threatened, we are all at risk. We are all involved in this journey called life. We must keep an eye out for one another and make an extra effort to encourage one another. Each of us is a vital thread in another person's tapestry. Let's talk! Educated in Kolkata, India and New Zealand, Ritu Seji has taught at well-regarded schools for the past 13 years. Ritu believes that the qualifications, Master of Science, alone do not define her. Her travels with a mariner husband, her kids, people she connects with, her experiences and cultural background play a big part in defining her. Ritu's passion for food technology and understanding of students' learning needs led her to write a student-friendly textbook, Senior Food Technology and Nutrition, and a teacher resource CD. She is also presented at the Nutrition Society of New Zealand conference. Ritu was awarded the New Zealand Science, Mathematics and Technology Teacher Award funded by the New Zealand Government and administrated by the Royal Society of New Zealand in 2013. She has the constant drive to experience new challenges in the field of technology education and offers trending context showcased by Technology Online, a site dedicated to educators, students and all those with an interest in technology education in New Zealand. I met Ritu at the education conference earlier this year. The first impression I had for her was that she is a keen learner, even though with the high qualifications she already has. She still keeps advancing herself to a high level in order to give the best to her students. The more I get to know her, the more I feel that she's more than that. She cares not only for her own students, but for all the young people around her, because she loves the world. She wants to support the young people to achieve high with the aim of improving the world. I started off the second part of my interview by asking Ritu my first signature question. Can you tell us three people who have influenced you so our young listeners can learn from them and why? 
Uh, with me, the three people who influenced me, I would have to group them up because that's my parents mm. and most importantly, my dad who a while ago rang me up and asked me why I hadn't done my PhD yet. And I said to him, Dad, I haven't got the time yet. I'm in the midst of writing a book and I have a full-time job. I have kids to look after and it's too much, of a, uh, too much to do yeah. at the moment. And he says, no, these are all excuses. So he didn't say that uh, that uh, education is priority and it is the key thing to achieve in life and it has great value. And uh, I think he came from a humble background and he was a self-taught man and he instilled that in us, so we keep learning. And the other person I would say was my high school principal, Miss Usha Nen. And uh, not only did she, she teach us the strategies and the skills to do better in our subjects, but she also taught us about uh, different aspects of life. So she would talk to us about grooming, she would talk to about, it was all girls' okay, school, so yeah. she could do that. And then uh, she would also find out what our hobbies were. And the minute she discovered that I could paint and I could sketch, she gave me an opportunity to display my work at school where everyone could see it. And uh, in the next four years of me being there, I was a head girl because okay. I did uh, that. I went into high school and then into college and I was the same campus. And by the end of my, in my third year of college, I was a head girl there. And um, so the third person would be again be my family and most importantly my kids, Dwesh and Ame. And uh, they show me courage every single second of the day and I learn a lot from them and I find they inspire me to do what I do. Okay, so it's mm -hmm. your dad, your kids and also your high school teacher, so yeah. And now my final question, my sec second signature question is, can you share with us something that you've heard or read that really inspired you? I think there is so much that inspires me every day. Like it could be a quote that I read or a sign yeah. that I see when I'm driving. But the most important uh, book that I read was the Leadership Challenge when I was away on my teacher's fellowship. and. Uh, it really showed me that there were five practices that leaders can uh, demonstrate and how to basically enable others to act uh, because I found that I am good at encouraging the heart but it's the other aspects is challenging the system and challenging people is that what I find difficult. So it was a good thing to learn from. The second book uh, that I really found quite uh, helpful was the Bhagavad Gita and um, the Bhagavad Gita is a scripture and it's which is a part of the Hindu epic Mahabharata and uh, it talks about righteousness and the right path to follow and it also talks about selfless action and uh, the philosophy behind uh, karma. Okay, yeah. that's very interesting. So thank you for taking your time to be interviewed today. Thank you Tristan, that was a pleasure. Since meeting Ritu, she has become one of the very important people in my life. She helps broaden my horizon about the world, and she has introduced some very great educators to me from around the world, like Bashir Kalini and Deb Auburn. They all have the same goal as Ritu, which is to give the best education to the young people with the ultimate goal of a better world. They use technology wisely to connect with the world, and they also form some digital professional education networks, to learn from and to inspire each other. They are a group of great educators who are really into the 21st century. Let's share. A few weeks ago, I mentioned the New Zealand Association for Gifted Children's 40th anniversary. Well, today, I have the conference chair lady, Rachel Pound, to talk to us about the conference. She is devoted in spending all her time arranging this wonderful conference. The New Zealand Association for Gifted Children has been supporting gifted children, their families, their parents, their educators for the last 40 years. It's a group of um, voluntary parents and um, teachers who um, really care about what these kids um, and, and how they are supported at, at school. Our gifted children um, come are wonderful kids, they're worth supporting, they have a, 
um, fantastic um, potential to, to contribute back to society. To celebrate Gifted Awareness Week, the New Zealand Association for Gifted Children is hosting a conference, The Many Faces of Giftedness, 3rd to 5th of July at Waikato University in Hamilton. We have programs for families, students, teachers, and lots of fantastic speakers and workshops for all. Science buffs, we've got Dr. Michelle Dickinson, Echo Nanagul. She's going to be talking about um, science and science demonstrations. We've got Bron Dr. Bronwyn O'Connor from the Auckland University um, talking about neuroscience and stem, stem cell technology. For the engineers, we've got a tour of the university engineering department. Um, we've got robotics, the Nash Kiwi bot KiwiBots, VEX Robotics, a two-day boot camp for our all keen um, robotic people. We've got, um, for music, we've got Adrian Mann, who's built the world's longest piano. He's going to come and talk to us and show off his piano. We've got a wonderful concert organised for students to um, showcase their talents. For the artists among us, we've got a tour of the Waikato Museum behind the scenes, how, how the spaces put together a show. We've got um, Priscilla Lowry from the Auckland University coming and talking about medieval paintings and the history of fashion within those. It's going to be a fantastic program for the kids. There's an early childhood program. We've got um, creators from the uh, Auckland Museum coming down with some, some artifacts to show the little ones and we've got some fantastic speakers on early childhood for educators and parents. We've got um, an international guest coming over from Singapore University Maureen Nye, Dr. Maureen Nyhart is going to talk about peak performance for um, smart kids and could we be happier. She's a clinical psychologist that specialises in gifted education and twice exceptional. We have a strong program for um, any parents and kids who have um, exceptionality, exceptionalities. Um, Matt Strawbridge is going to talk about dyslexia potential. Uh, we've got... Um, Songs of the 2E. So there's a huge program um, down at Waikato University, 3rd to the 5th of July. All welcome. Come join us. It'll be a fantastic event. The conference is packed with exciting activity, and it's only $180 for a family of four over all three days, or $80 for a single person. So for more information, please visit www.nzagc40thanniversary.org. That's www.nzagc-40th-anniversary.org. We thank you, Richard and Rachel, for coming on to my show today. If you missed the last part of Richard's interview or want to listen to my other shows, please go to my website, www.questisfun.org.nz slash youthvoices. That is www.questisfun.org.nz dot q u e s t hyphen i s hyphen f u n dot o r g dot n z slash youth voices. So for today, that's it from me, Tristan Pang. Thank you for listening. I welcome your feedback and your support of the program. Please write to me on Facebook or email me to youthvoicesnz at gmail dot com. Don't forget to like Youth Voices with Tristan Pang on Facebook. Good night, world. again next Saturday at 5.20pm to dig deeper or listen anytime online at planetaudio.org.nz slash youthvoices Youth Voices 